Hi, Marty Gabler here with another segment of Beside Still Waters. I'm looking at Psalm chapter 9, verse 9. It says, The Lord also will be a refuge and a high tower for the oppressed, a refuge and a stronghold in times of trouble, high cost, destitution, and desperation. At least that's the way it puts it in the Amplified Version. We are grateful tonight, aren't we, that the Lord is our refuge and high tower uh, kind of goes along with what Melissa is fond of saying that God stands above it all and that high tower where he stands above it all we are refuged in him Psalm 9 verse 10 says and they who know your name who have experience and acquaintance with your mercy will lean on and confidently put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek, inquire of, and for you on the authority of God's word and the right of their necessity. Verse 11 says, Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare among the peoples His doings. Actually, it's hard not to do that. Declare among the peoples His doings. God is working in this earth. Verse 12, For He who avenges the blood of His people shed unjustly remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted, the poor, and the humble. Verse 13, Have mercy upon me, and be gracious to me, Lord. Consider how I am afflicted by those who hate me, you who lift me up from the gates of death. Verse 14, That I may show forth, recount, and tell aloud all your praises and the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in your salvation and your saving help. Verse 15 of Psalm 9, The nations have sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot caught. There are people groups who have dug pits, who have set nets in them and about them in an attempt to work unrighteousness. But they are going to find that their own foot is caught in those nets. Verse 16, the Lord has made himself known. He executes judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. Verse 17, the wicked shall be turned back headlong into Sheol, the place of the departed spirits of the wicked, even all the nations that forget or are forgetful of God. It seems that the indication here in verse 17 is just a simple remembering of God and His laws, His principles. Verse 18, For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the expectation and hope of the meek and the poor shall not perish forever. Verse 19, Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. We pray that now. My friends and I pray that in agreement. We are asking, O Lord, that you let not man and his machinations 
and his agendas prevail. But rather, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then finally, verse 20 says, Put them in fear, make them realize their frail nature. O Lord, that the nations, the people groups, may know themselves to be but men. Man is not the final authority. Our own president has said, there's nothing more powerful than God. Oh, Heavenly Father, it is in the name of Jesus we pray. I pray for my friends that tonight, as we approach bedtime and lie up on our beds, that we will find that refuge the psalmist wrote about. We're not looking for a thing. We're not looking for a place. We're looking for you to be our refuge. We find our refuge in you, mighty God, Jehovah God Almighty. You are indeed the high tower that we run to. Do not let men prevail. Your purposes prevail. Thy kingdom come. A blessed night to you, my friends. As our Lord, the Good Shepherd, leads you beside still waters.